Well, hey, I'm Michael O'Brien, and I am going to be starting this YouTube... What do you call it, Mikey? <laughs> this YouTube journey. <laughs> yeah, it's like a YouTube journey. My son, Mikey, uh, I call him Mikey, but it's Michael Jr., is uh, kind of helping me put this all together. So I've had a lot of people through the years ask me how I got started in the music industry. And so I'm going to give you just a, a flyby of what that looks like. So it really all did start when I was 12 years old. I had my first solo. The song was, I like to teach the world to sing in perfect harmony. I, I was so nervous, but I also felt really sick. And my mom said, ah, it's just nerves. And so I finished the song and I went home. I had 102 temperature. I had the flu. As time progressed, I loved music, but I was really more into baseball. But it was 14 years of age. I was at Como High School and I went to see this show choir by the name of Magic Moods. And I was with my buddy, he's a really cool dude, and I'm sitting there and I'm listening to these people sing and do harmonies and everything. And I looked at him and I said, this is what I want to do with my life. And he looked at me and I don't think we were friends after that. <laughs> we just kind of, it was over. And I just dove into music. I just started singing and pounding on the piano, driving my mom crazy, driving my music teacher crazy. Um, I was in musicals. I was just singing all the time. So I finally graduated in 1982 and I decided to go to the University of Southwestern Louisiana and study opera music. So I sang and sang and I really didn't like it for the first year, but then after the first year, I really started loving it and just listened to it all the time. And so I was classically trained for about three and a half years. But to be honest with you, I was a horrible student. I was completely lost at this time as well. And so I just didn't take anything seriously. And I basically just said, no, nah, I don't want to do this for a living. So I quit singing. I quit college, didn't graduate. I was in the restaurant business at that time. I became a bar manager of a place called Chili's and I was working that place. And finally, I just thought, man, I got to get out of here. I just didn't like Lafayette. I, I was in the really that bar scene and I was wanting a new clean break. So I moved to Miami, Florida. It's not the greatest move in the world, but I live with my sister and I was pursuing music, but there's not much music going down in Miami. And I just got back into the same world. Long story short, I got real scared because I had almost lost my life doing drugs. And so I ran to a church, just surrendered my heart to Christ. And I didn't know what was next. I just had no idea. So at that point I was playing piano in a restaurant and I was also a waiter at that same restaurant. And this group came through called uh, the Heritage Singers and I tried out for that group. Um, I made that group and in 1988, August, I began to travel with them full time, 365 days. Most of, we were probably gone 330 or 40 days out of the year. Of course, a lot changed that year because that's where I met my wife and we've been married now for 32 years. Well. <laughs> my son. After that year, we were in California. I ended up leaving the group and going to take a job as a young adult pastor at a church. I was not ordained. I was not equipped. I, I was a new Christian. I don't even know how I got this job. It was horrible for that first year. But our young adult program grew and grew and grew, but I didn't know what I was doing. Then the music minister left, and so I became the music minister. And then the youth pastor left, and then I became the youth pastor. So for a year and a half, I worked at that, that place, and Heidi and I decided that we were gonna give uh, Nashville a try, because that's where, if you're gonna be in Christian music, that's where you go. We packed up our bags in April of 1991, and we moved to Nashville. We said we're gonna give it two years, and if in two years nothing happened, then we we're gonna have to try to figure out what we're gonna do. So I'm working now back at a restaurant, waiting on people, waiting on God. I was so frustrated, but I met some songwriters who were working there, frustrated songwriters. The joke is in Nashville, you wanna find a musician, say, hey, waiter. And that's pretty much what it is. But now you can just say, hey, plumber, hey, anybody in Nashville is a musician. So anyway, I'm frustrated. I'm writing with other guys. I joined this group called Mercy Street. We're trying to break into the pop world and just nothing. So at that point, I joined this group called Bash and the Code, but they were called Bash at that time. So I started singing with them. 
but I'm still working at the restaurant. Then I uh, started playing keyboards for this group called The Allies. Bob Carlisle, Randy Thomas, I was a huge fan of these guys. I couldn't even believe I was getting to audition for them. Uh, but I got to meet them and I was like, <laughs> you know, just I was freaking out. And they're like, yeah, I guess you can come out on the road with us. So I did that for like a fall. At that point, I started playing keyboards for this um, southern gospel singer by the name of Allison Durham Spear. But she was trying to break into the pop world, so she dropped the spear, and her name was Allison Durham. So I'm playing keys for Allison on the road, writing songs. At this point, I get signed to a publishing deal. The interesting part about this is that it was two years almost to the week of when we moved to Nashville. So now I'm doing demos. I got to quit my job at the restaurant. I'm doing demos, you know, just trying to get my songs uh, cut by other artists. And uh, so time goes on and another two years passes by. I'm playing for uh, now Twyla Paris. I'm out on the road with her. I'm her keyboard guy. There's a big band. It's the Beyond a Dream tour. It's a big tour. We're selling out places everywhere. It's just an awesome. She was like female artist of the year that year. And, uh, and then miraculously, because of all the songwriting and the demos, uh, I signed a record deal with Benson Records in 1994. And it was 1995 January when I really just started going out full time, pretty much living on the road. And so I'm going, I'm singing, opening up for different artists, Stephen Curtis Chapman, Mark Lowry. It, it was just a long list of all these people. I'm living the dream. So I did that for two years. I recorded my first project, the second project, Conviction and uh, just traveling. And then my third project, Godspeed, there was a ch change in the president of the, of the he had died, the, the, the original guy had died, and so somebody else came on. And I had got a new a and I had four or five A&Rs, which is artist and repertoire. And so I was just writing a lot of songs with, with, uh, with different people. My wife was included in that. Basically what happened was I recorded it, they released one song, and it did not do well. They didn't put a lot of time under behind it. And so it was just, it was over before it even began. And so in 1999, I was trying to figure out what I was gonna do. And New Song, the group, Russ Lee was leaving. And I had been out with New Song my first year that in 1995, I was opening up for New Song that, most of that year. And so I made some friends with Eddie Carswell, Billy Goodwin. Eddie called me, said, hey man, we need a guy, you wanna come out? you know, just try out. My basic tryout was not my singing. They knew I could sing. They just didn't know if I could, if I could share the gospel. So I went out, shared my testimony. I think at that, that first time I ever did it, like 600 people came forward. And so they were like, hey, you got the job. <laughs> you got the job. I was like, okay. So I started traveling with a new song. I did that for seven years and uh, at that point, it was the winter jam, it was a summer jam, all these different things were happening. All these doors were opening, the Christmas shoes had hit, we were on TV, we did movies. Um, I wrote a song with Eddie called When God Made You, I sang it with Natalie Grant, that kind of took off. Um, and basically for those seven years, I was just, you know, just really in the industry, but I was miserable, absolutely miserable. Um, the first three years, probably not so much, but the final four years, I just wasn't feeling it anymore. Heidi and I were, uh, we had gone through a really dark time and then God began to heal our marriage and I just was gone so much. So in 2006, um, so I could have more control of my schedule, so I could be with my kids, I could have a father, my wife could have a husband. Um, I left the group them kind of scratching their heads because we had just finished um, a DVD uh, of, of Rescue and Rescue was doing really good on the radio and they were like, man, are you sure you're hearing from the Lord? And I'm like, absolutely. So I left, took a, a real step of faith and that was the beginning of um, a, a love project that I did with my wife and then just going through Be Still My Soul, Christmas Project, Psalms, Hymns, and Spiritual Songs, and, and finally here this last year, Crown Him. So all I can say is the last 15 years, and I've, if, if you count when I was been with uh, the Heritage Singers, it's been 33 years with some you know waiting in between, but 27 years of full-time ministry, and just the opportunities now that I get to uh, lead worship at some of these women's conferences, Extraordinary Women, 
um, the Fresh Grounded Faith Conference, uh, these men conferences, Ignite conferences. I do a lot of work with Ken Hammond at AIG. God has given me so many opportunities to just, what I could say, minister to the body of Christ through worship. I, I kind of like a worship leader slash artist. Um, more emphasis on the worship leader. Uh, and I think that is the, the greatest privilege that I have is to lead God's people in worship to the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. And I think John the Baptist says it best. Uh, he said, I must decrease, he must increase. So as I look at my career as an artist, all of, since I was 12 years old, all the way up to right now, um, I think right now is the sweetest time that I've ever had uh, in the Lord and, and being able to serve him in this way. So I just want to say thank you for watching this. We're going to try over the next you know six or seven months to put out more content uh, like this. Uh, we're excited. This is kind of new for me, and I'm excited that uh, you're going to be a part of this. So you know, spread the word. My son is doing a great job, and uh, so this is just a way for us to um, hopefully minister to you guys and, and give you more information about what's going on.